In 1989, Mary Lambert's Pet Cemetery came to cinemas. The US production with an R rating had costs of $11 million dollars and made alone in America more than five times its budget back. It was a great commercial success. The reviews were rather mixed to positive. The script by Stephen King is based on his same named novel from 1983. Dr. Lewis Creed moves into a new home with his wife and two children. Nearby is a road with fast-moving trucks, which house pets constantly fall victim to, including his domestic cat, Church. When he buries it in the pet cemetery nearby in a certain place, the cat comes back to life with a changed, dark behavior. Short time later, also one of his children dies, and the father, blinded by grief, buries his son against all warnings in the pet cemetery. Movie and novel don't differ in content in the core story, but the novel is a lot more detailed and some scenes take place differently. The neighbor, for example, appears at the first time when he helps the little boy after he got stung in the neck by a bee. In the movie, some characters are missing, like the Wendigo or Norma, the wife of the neighbor. While others, like the ghost of the dead student, Pascal, can also be seen in scenes where in the book he only appears as voice. The resurrected animals in the book are also not automatically violent, but rather emotionless without grace or personality. Church is by far not as aggressive as in the movie. And this is also true for Timmy Baterman. He does not come back as a brainless zombie. In fact, he is relatively normal in the book and mocks seemingly omniscient the man who wants to confront him with their darkest secrets. It's also his father who kills him a second time before he sets the house on fire and commits suicide. Novel and movie are both okay, but I clearly favor the novel. However, I never felt the need to return to either of them, since the story is for my taste far too predictable and has, typical for King, some annoying exposition machines, like the daughter who constantly dreams of the plot to spill it out for the probably amnesic audience a second time. And also, I am not a fan of convenient coincidences and magic in general. The movie is well cast besides the annoying daughter, entertainingly staged and certainly belongs to the few good kids. Adaptations. This can't be said about the sequel from 1992. A teenager moves with his father to the mother's home village after her accidental death on a film set. There he gets to know the story of the pet cemetery. And of course, this leads again to zombies. Crap Cemetery 2 Zombie Boogaloo is an enigmatic curiosity and a trash classic, like Sleepwalkers, where a generation of viewers still fail by trying to make sense of its sheer existence. It seems as if someone had buried the script of part 1 in the pet cemetery, which unholy, unwatchable, out of the idea grave crawling outcome even scared Stephen King himself away. 
who had his name removed from the celluloid corpse in time for the release. Actually, the story was supposed to be about Ellie, the annoying explanation machine from part one as the only survivor. Instead, they wrote a completely new script in which nothing makes any sense. Animals and humans are in principle killed and revived for no reason whatsoever. And their behavior does not follow any logic or rule, neither before nor after their death. Director Mary Lambert proved with this thing that part one was probably pure luck. And her other so-called movies also underline this assumption. In 2019, Kevin Kirch and Dennis Whitmire's version made its $21 million budget worldwide more than five times back. The first half is basically a remake of the 1989 version. In the second half, however, there is a new story, and this time the daughter dies. Also, the ending differs completely from the novel or the original. The new Pet Cemetery is, at least for me, and I know many see it differently, a positive surprise. It is better cast and has a faster pace than the predecessor. The tight staging fixes some lengths and stupidities of the original. The Pasco spirit, for example, appears less and shorter. The same goes for the annoying flashbacks of the sick big sister. God, they were a pain in the ass back then. And here the neighbor's wife gets at least a photo and the Wendigo a mentioning. The story itself makes now much more sense, as far as that's even possible in a zombie fantasy story. And the returning animal or people also behave more like those from the book. From my point of view, despite or even because of some liberties taken with the story, it manages to capture the uncanny atmosphere of the novel much better on several occasions. <laughs> The direct-to-streaming directorial debut Pet Cemetery Bloodlines from 2023, set in 1969, is supposed to be a prequel to the 2019 remake. Here, Judd Quandell is actually planning to leave his hometown when his girlfriend is attacked on the Betaman farm from the dog of the supposed Vietnam returnee Timmy, which much like his dog behaves strangely and confronts people with their dark secrets. Judd researches the town origin and that some residents, like his father, act as a kind of guardians of the Pet Cemetery. So so that evil does not spread. Meanwhile, Tommy kills and buries a woman, which then comes back as a zombie and also kills people. In the end, Judd and company discovered Timmy's secret, that he is a zombie. So what the viewer already knew or at least suspected from the start. Lindsay Anderson Beer's scary simple-minded The Timmy Belterman Story with gore inserts is, as she says, a kind of prequel to the novel rather than the 2019 remake. But for me it's neither, and pulls many things out of its head. Like with Timmy's dog, the aggressive slash murderous behavior of the two, the guardian nonsense, the zombie attacks, the complete god-awful stupid final and so on.